Hi, I'm Sam LaPrade, and welcome to An Hour to Give. This week is all about CHEO. We're going to talk about CN Cycle as well. I'm so excited to welcome Dr. Jason Berman to the show. Hello, Dr. Berman. Hi, Sam. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy you're here. You have got a huge title. Tell us what your, what your role is. I'm the CEO and Scientific Director at the CHEO Research Institute, the Vice President of Research at CHEO, and I'm a pediatric oncologist, so I look after children with cancer and do research in that area. It's incredible. Can we just go back and talk a little bit about your journey? Because I always wonder, you know, brilliant people like yourself, how do you get to be where you are? Where did the, the, the you know, really the, the love of, of working with children come from? Well, you know, when I was younger, I spent a lot of time working with kids as a lifeguard, as a counselor, as a swim instructor, really enjoyed working with kids. And so when I went to medical school, pediatrics seemed a natural fit. And uh, I really didn't get involved with research until much later in my training. I was in Boston for my fellowship, training in pediatric oncology at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Got the research bug and the rest is history. The rest is history. And you are changing lives here in this region, saving lives in many cases. Talk to me a little bit, uh, Dr. Berman, about the research that's being done at CHEO, particularly around pediatric oncology. Well, so, you know, we've come a long way in cancer care for kids and have made tremendous advancements. The number of children that are surviving from cancer are higher than they ever were. Diseases that were fatal even 10, 15 years ago are now curable. So that's really amazing. And it's really research that has driven uh, those advances. Yesterday's research is today's cures and today's, today's treatments. But we haven't, you know, solved everything, right? We still have children that... Um, don't survive their cancers. And for many of our kids that survive cancers, it's at a high cost. Toxicities from the treatments they have from their chemotherapy and radiation, which gives them lifelong problems with their kidneys, growth, heart problems, hearing problems, all sorts of other challenges. And so that's actually become a whole new area of research in terms of how do we target our therapies to reduce some of the side effects of, of treatment while preserving the same cure rate? And how do we help those children once they survive cancer in order to have the best quality of life? Mm -hmm. And so some of that work is happening at CHEO, along with trying to find newer and better targeted therapies. Uh, as many people have heard, um, you know, cancers are mainly treated still with chemotherapy, which is really nonspecific treatment that targets the cancer cell, but also causes lots of collateral damage to normal cells. And that's what leads to many of these side effects. And so if we can understand the biology of those cancer cells better, we can design treatments that are specific to those cancer cells without causing all that damage. And one way we're doing that is with immunotherapy. That's where the body's own immune system is um, harnessed in order to be able to take that power of immune control that's normally used to help fight off viruses and bacteria and fight off cancer cells. Okay, fantastic. I, I, I could listen to you all day long, and, I, and I've been asked to ask you a very specific question, and I'm, I'm so excited to know the answer. What's the deal with zebrafish? Yeah, so in my own lab, uh, we use zebrafish as a, as a cancer model. And so it's really quite remarkable. Zebrafish are these small tropical fish, about the size of a minnow or a, a guppy, a couple inches in length. They're originally from the Ganges River in India. And what's remarkable about these tropical fish is that they are very genetically similar to humans. It's pretty humbling. 75% mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> of the genes in zebrafish that code for proteins are the same genes that we have that code for proteins in us. So those are the building blocks of life. And they also contain in all the same types of organs and cells. So that allows us to study what happens when development goes awry and leads to cancer in the zebrafish model. And one of the huge advantages of the zebrafish over mouse models, which are a more traditional animal model, is that the larvae or the baby zebrafish are see-through, they're transparent, and when you breed an adult, uh, adult male and female zebrafish, they produce hundreds of these transparent larvae that are easy to collect because they, they don't uh, reproduce in the womb, they're outside the womb, so it allows us to really have a window on what's going on. That is fascinating. Did you ever think in a million years when you were starting research that you would be using zebrafish? No, it really is an amazing uh, a model system, and people use zebrafish for all sorts of types of human disease studies, but really they got their start as a disease model in cancer, and we've made tremendous advances in understanding many cancer pathways by using zebrafish. Mm -hmm. Now, I think about the incredible research you're doing. I think about all the, uh, the research that's being done worldwide. Why CHEO? Why Ottawa? 
So, you know, Chio is an amazing place, and really we're very fortunate to have Chio in our community. Uh, Hospital-based research institutes like the Chio Research Institute really are remarkable because they're right there where the patients and families are. That means the kinds of research questions that we ask, whether it's related to cancer or other conditions, are really, um, you know, informed and framed by patients and families. What are the, what are the uh, growing concerns? What are the issues that they're facing that we can take back to the lab, whether it's a wet lab like our lab, or to a computer-based lab, or to a data source, and answer those questions and then bring those back to the patient. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the patients for a minute. We're going to meet a young patient in a few minutes, and I'm so excited to, to hear his story. But, but when you're working, uh, you know, obviously as a doctor and, and uh, also doing research, how important is it to you to, to have that bedside manner, that, that opportunity for making sure patients feel comfortable in all this process? So one of the tremendous privileges being a clinician scientist is being able to look after patients, being inspired by patients and their families. And these kids, uh, like Hayden, are, are just amazing, um, as you'll hear from him uh, soon. And that really sort of grounds us. It reminds us that, you know, in the end of every experiment, that there's a patient, there's a family there, um, and that this research is bringing them hope. And so um, working with those families uh, every day, I feel I'm able to provide care and improve um, the quality of life of that specific patient, of that individual patient, and then take that information back to the lab and hopefully improve li the lives of many, many patients with our research. And we know CN cycle for CHEO, obviously so important. The money funds, uh, you know, oncology research for, uh, for pediatrics. So talk to me a little bit about how important this event is and, and how do you spend that important day? So CN Cycle is a, is a critical event, and uh, philanthropy and donor support through the CHEO Foundation for research is critical. Um, unlike clinical care, we do not receive funding for research from the Ministry of Health. So really, funding comes from grants um, and, uh, uh, and philanthropy. That's how funds are raised that support the research that then ultimately informs care. And so CN Cycle, um, over my five years here, has continued to grow and grow and grow and become really a, um, you know, a key event um, in, in, a, in our city, uh, something that everyone looks forward to, really a kickoff of the, of the summer. Last year, I had the opportunity to uh, be on site uh, at, the, at the grounds there. I was amazed at the number of participants, brought some of the people from the lab, brought some of our fish so we could share some of the work that we're doing and really highlight how the funding uh, that's being raised by CN Psycho is supporting research and ultimately improve care. Mm -hmm. What's your dream? Let, take me a decade from now. Where's, where's pediatric cancer research taking us? So that's a, that's a great question. And um, more and more, we're trying to personalize or tailor care to the individual patient. And this idea of personalized care or precision medicine is really from the genetic code to the postal code. Mm -hmm. So understanding the genetics of that child's tumor, but understanding other things that are really important in the treatment of that child. What's their cultural background? Where are they from? What kind of supports do they have? How do we best provide that kind of treatment for that individual child that's going to give them the best chance of cure and, and, and a big uh, a quality of life ahead of them? And it sounds, and, and CHEO is very much like this, it's, yes, of course, it's about the patient, but it's about the family. It's about, it's about that whole nucleus and, and really supporting. How, how driven are you to ensure that that even expands? Like it's all of the the items you just mentioned, from a culture to you know to, to see them grow up and and to not have that that kind of treatment that has lingering effects as well. I mean, there's there's a lot in there. Yeah, so that's one of the amazing things about being in pediatrics. It's not just about the patient, and we talk about family centered care really more than patient centered care because we know that child and those people that support that child. Often it's their parents, but it's also their siblings. You know that that sort of family support is really important, particularly when a child child is going through a diagnosis of cancer. And we know that diagnosis doesn't just affect that child. It affects the parents. It affects their siblings in terms of all sorts of things, how much time the parents have to spend with the siblings. There can be also economic, social, psychological, tremendous impacts on that family that will change that family, um, you know, for, for the future. And so we want to make sure that we address that in a really wholesome way. You're going to be talking with one of our social workers later with, uh, with Parisa, and their role is critical to try to make sure that the family has all of the supports that they need to get them through this journey. Is there... Is there a patient, is there a family that still sticks in your mind 
uh, when you think about the work that you do that uh, that you you think about as you sort of head off to Chio every day? So, you know, while I think about all of our successes and all the patients that have been cured, the patients that stick most with me are the ones that, that sadly have, have passed on. Mm -hmm. Because as a cancer researcher, that reminds us that we can do better. There's still more that we can do. And I've seen over the 20 years that I've been a pediatric oncologist, changes in the way we treat certain diseases such that some of those patients would still be alive today. And that reminds me how research has really, you know, changed the game and um, how we need to continue to support research, continue to fund that advancement so we can cure more and more kids of cancer. Beautifully said. What's your message to anyone participating in CN Cycle for CHEO? Uh, give them a big shout out. What would you say to, to all of the donors and the volunteers that are going to participate? Well, I would say a huge thank you. Thanks for spending your time and your, your day doing this, remembering that um, there's a family like your family at the, at the other end, and that family is either going through treatment, um, just been diagnosed and about to go through treatment, just completed treatment and worried whether their disease is going to come back, or maybe has lost a child and is looking for, you know, hope. What, what, can, they, what can be the legacy of, of, of that child who they've lost? And so, you know, regardless of which of those families you have in mind, or maybe you have all of those families in mind, what you're doing is inspiring and providing hope to improve cancer care in the future. How do you keep your hope alive? You know, Every morning that, that I wake up, um, I think about our patients and families, um, their, um, their tremendous um, resolve uh, as they're going through this journey of cancer treatment. I think about uh, the people in my lab um, and the researchers at the Chio Research Institute who are so dedicated. I think about the clinicians, the doctors, the nurses, the social workers, the dietitians, the psychologists our whole team, the pharmacists, everyone and how committed they are to um, helping, you know, it's with a single goal of really trying to help and improve care for these kids to get them through to the other side so that they can have a full, you know, a full, a fulsome life. And so that's, that's tremendously rewarding. Beautifully said, as always, uh, Dr. Jason Berman, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Sam. Dr. Berman, of course, joining us from CHEO. Today's all about CN Cycle for CHEO. We're going to find out how you can help. Stay with us on An Hour to Give. Okay, I have a little bit of homework for you. I'd like you to visit cncycle.ca to find out all the details about, of course, this incredible event happening May 5th for CHEO. Oncology social worker Parisa Racima is joining us now. Hi, how are you? Okay, good, thanks for having me. It's so great to have you yeah. here. You have a very important job. I don't even begin to understand how you do this every single day. You must be an incredibly compassionate person. I like to think I am. I yeah. think all social workers are, right? Yeah. By trade. Yeah, absolutely. So give me a little bit of a history. When, when you uh, find yourself in this role, how did, how did we get there? So I started uh, at CHEO nine years ago, and I started in nephrology, um, dabbled in nephrology, did a few years in chronic pain, um, and also tried the mental health side with the chronic pain team and youth net. Really realized I love medical social work. There's just, the, the, every job's a bit different, and I really found my niche was medical social work, um, and I had an interest in oncology, and when a position came up, I applied, and now that I've been here a couple years, it is absolutely my niche, and I do not intend on leaving it anytime soon. That's fantastic. Yeah. So when I say CN cycle to you what what images come up for you um, community I mm. think community is you know I've been to the CN cycles before um, previous to being in on the oncology department now that I am in the oncology department as a parent before I was a parent um, and just family community everyone coming together to be able to support um, families that really really need it and beyond families the program, right? The program at the research level, like Dr. Berman shared, the program to be able to kind of find cures, to support our families in different ways financially, um, to offset some of those stressors for families, and to ultimately move us forward when it comes to oncology and making sure that our kids can grow up to be healthy. 
And you've touched on something that's so important. I have a, a friend whose son uh, was, was treated at CHEO, and he's a healthy 20-year-old guy right now, and, and it's wonderful news, of course, for their family. But you brought up something that I only learned when I followed her journey was the financial piece. So we think about, of course, the emotional piece. We think about the, the medical side of it. We think about all of that. That financial piece never even entered my mind but boy, oh boy, is it important. So you're looking at the family, as Chio does always, mm -hmm. holistically. Mm -hmm. Walk me through all of those different areas and why and why focus on, on them all. So, you know, you have your patient, right? And your patient is really being looked at primarily from the medical team of the cancer diagnosis, of the treatment and what that's going to look like. And then in conjunction with the medical team, specifically in oncology, we have a psychosocial team. And our team really supports that wraparound of everything else happening around the patient and family. So yes, there's a patient that's requiring medical treatment, but it's much bigger than that. So we have, you have family, right? You have the parents, what does that look like? What are the psychosocial factors? You have the family piece, siblings, right? What does that look like? Older siblings, younger siblings, in daycare, in school. You have what is the fi family's financial situation, right? We have families that come in that may already have struggles ahead of time and this is gonna be an even bigger hardship on them. We look at their coping styles. We look at what kind of community support they have. Do they have family and friends in town? We, have, we're, we treat families from you know all of Eastern Ontario, Northern Ontario, Western Quebec. So we have families coming up, coming down from Nunavut. We have families coming from North Bay and Timmins, um, you know, uh, far off into the Quebec side. So all of that isn't necessarily at the forefront of your mind when you're thinking of an oncology diagnosis, but all of that comes into play. If you don't live close, where are you going to stay? right? If you have older children that need to get to and from school and you're only a one vehicle family, how is that going to work when your other kiddo has appointments? Um, typically some of our families, one of the parents will take time off work to be able to support their, their, their kiddo that's getting treatment at coming to appointments. That's a huge financial stressor huge, on families. Huge, absolutely. The unique challenges, uh, we just talked about some of them, but but when you think about all of the families that, that you would have worked with, is there is there an example of a challenge that may be similar to financial that is not on our brain, like not, not in our minds? Um, I mean, especially when we're, we're talking about our oncology families, we have a special fund for them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the Hemonc Fund, Hemonc Social mm -hmm. Work uh, Fund, and it's funded through dollar don uh, donor dollars. And mm -hmm. this is why events like the CN Cycle are so important for our families, not only for that huge research piece that Dr. Berman was speaking about, but also for those practical, tangible pieces. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, we have families that are now without an income stream, right, because a parent has taken time off work, and then all of a sudden, there are costs associated. Mm -hmm. A child has surgery for their oncology diagnosis and now they require rental of crutches or they need a wheelchair or they need specific supports in place or there are medications that may not be covered based on their OHIP or the OHIP plus. That's where we come into play and they can make requests to the specific social work HEMON fund, HEMONC fund to fund that and take that financial burden off of families that are already going through so much in the oncology journey and that's just something small yet tangible that can make such a difference for these families. Do you see a little bit of the weight lift off when you share that with families? Because I can imagine, you know, being so close to these families and you probably hear more than even some of their, you know, their other family members or their friends about this process. I mean, just being able to relieve a little bit of pressure. Absolutely. I think... Being an oncology family is unique until you're, you live it. And I mean, I can't even say I've lived it, right? I'm, I'm a team member, but I'm not a family, an oncology family myself. And it, until you're in it, it's really hard to imagine. And so being able to take small pressures off of families, whether it's a listening ear, whether it's, you know, sitting with them after they've heard some tough news or, you know, asking them how their night was and, you know, listening about maybe a struggle with one of the siblings that's struggling with a diagnosis or just worries about how they're going to afford something or not. Um, little things like that make a huge difference in the long run. What's the biggest challenge you face and your team faces? Ultimately, the needs are just so great. So we have so many families that are coming through our program, unfortunately, um, and how do you meet the demands for what these patients and families ultimately need um, with the resources we have at hand? And so that's why 
fundraisers like the CN Cycle are so important on a small scale and a large scale in, in supporting our families and the work that we do every day. Mm -hmm. How do you all care for yourselves and each other? Um, you know, as, as the families, of course, look to you, who do you look to? I have to say, I, I, I think very fondly of our psychosocial team. Um, I mean, our larger entire oncology department um, is quite a large family, but our, our oncology team, our psychosocial oncology team is a small group of us. We're comprised of social workers, we have psychologists, child life specialists, interlink uh, nurses, and our transitions workers, and we all work from that psychosocial lens with families, and we're also very close-knit. So we connect with each other. We know that when one of us is working with a patient and family and things are heavy, we know how to kind of take each other out for coffee or lunch or just kind of check in and send a text message. Mm -hmm. And we practice what we preach, self-care, right? Mm -hmm. we, we talk about to our families and our parents and even our patients all the time about taking care of yourselves. And we have to practice that, whether it's getting exercise or doing meditation or, you know, mm -hmm. going out for, for snacks after work and then connecting with our families. Same things we tell our families. I, I keep getting that vision of a, of a village. We often talk about it takes a village to raise a child. It really much, this is a very special village uh, that is at Chio. And, and I consider, and I don't know about you, but I consider all the people participating in CN Cycle to be part of that village. And, and the village just grows, especially on May 5th. How will you spend May 5th? I'll be at the CN Cycle. Yeah. Um, I'll be there with my son. He absolutely loves it. Not only do I love to bring my son to show him what mom does, right, and some of the people and the families that mom works with, but I think it's amazing for him at a young age to see the power of community. What happens when people come together um, and create something bigger than that day? Mm -hmm. And what words of advice would you have for somebody that is participating maybe for the very first time and they are maybe not connected specifically to a, to a individual family. How can you inspire them and, and really give them hope for, for this big event that's happening? I mean, I would just say, think of your humanity, right? Think of that connectedness how, of what we feel like when we can step into someone else's shoes and just kind of walk a mile. I think too, the reality is that in some way or another, you're connected to someone who knows someone who knows someone whose child has had cancer. And it's once you find that connection, it just it hits a little closer. Um, so just dive in. It's a fabulous day. It's so mm -hmm. much fun. It's inspiring. Is there any reason you need to be inspired? Like just do it. Right. Um, so it's a great day. It's it's inspiring. It's um, heartwarming, and ultimately, you are helping families in need in your community. It's uh, it's such a wonderful day, and and I always uh, you know say a little a little good news for the for the for the weatherman. I'm always like, please, please give us <laughs> give us good weather, and uh, but it always seems to to just be such a, a very special day for Chio. Give us a sense. Uh, the, the fundraising dollars, as you mentioned, go to, to different specific areas. We talked earlier about the research piece. You must also be inspired by the research that's being done at Chio because then the outcomes are outcomes that you get to share with families as well. Absolutely. I mean, research is powerful. Um, we don't get anywhere in, in life without research at some point, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, being able to watch patients receive treatments that are better than they were 5, 10, 15 years ago because of the research and because of the previous patients who've enrolled in these studies and been part of this research in some ways, um, it's just like a full circle moment. Mm -hmm. um, and I think being able to have the privilege of being with families in some of the most vulnerable and private moments of their lives um, is something that I will never take for granted. Yeah, and I know they don't take you for granted. <laughs> I can tell. You just have such a beautiful aura about you, and I can see how, how this work is, is really just, you know, your passion. Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, it's funny. I, you know, we often see when our families are inpatients, we walk into their rooms and sometimes parents are in their PJs. And, you know, I say, hey, don't worry. One day I'll send you a picture of myself in PJs so we're even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's that relatability, right? Totally. And as a parent, you know, I think you probably look at the job even even through a different lens as a, as a mom yourself. Absolutely. And, and since becoming a mom, I, my perspective in life has changed because of the work that I do in oncology. Mm -hmm. I hug my little one closer. You know, I let him have that extra scoop of ice cream. Um, and I just know that life is really precious. And so to kind of really savor it in the moment, long term, short term, and uh, just say I love you whenever you can.
Yeah, beautifully said. Thanks. Thank you so much. Parisa Rustami joining us today, oncology social worker, and you can see she loves her job at CHEO, which I love so much. We're going to speak more about CN cycle for CHEO. You will not want to go anywhere. My friend Caden is joining us next. Stay with us on An Hour to Give. And we are back on an hour to give, and I'm so excited to introduce you to my new friend, Caden Dussault and his beautiful mom, Kelly Trump. Great to have you both here. Great to be here. Are yeah. you excited? Uh, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. So so take me back. How, how First of all, how old are you? 11. 11. Did you just have a birthday? No. No. Okay, but you're but you're 11. You're a solid 11. Yeah, okay. I, lo I look eight though. You do. You think you look eight? <laughs> yes. I think you're very handsome. <laughs> yeah. So tell me a little bit about why you're here today. Well, I'm here today because I was a uh, former CN cycle person. Dream, dream team. Player. Dream team. And um, I, I love helping other people with like telling them on what chemo is and radiation and how everything's going to go and what, what's going on basically. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Well, that's amazing. And mom, to hear Caden even say the word chemo both breaks my heart and inspires me at the same time. Does that make sense to you? All the time. Yeah. All, the, all through his cancer diagnosis and all the treatments, just hearing him say, I have cancer was something you never think you're ever going to experience as a parent. Yeah. And hearing, like seeing you go through chemo, but he always went through everything with like a smile. So even though it was really rough, obviously, and hearing him chemo radiation, like he helps teach other kids these big words and these big things. So obviously as a mother, I'm beyond proud, but I'm also heart wrenched that you had to go through that. But seeing you on this side <laughs> is, this is the best thing for him, so Absolutely. I'm very proud. Do you remember when you found out that you had cancer? Uh, kind of. Yeah, tell me about it. Well, I all I can remember is that I'm in a room with uh, mom. Was it Mark? Or yeah, mom and Mark, and there's Doctor Thacker. Was it? Yes. Dr. He's Thacker. sitting there with this like big screen thing and this computer, and then I get told that I'm a boy with cancer. And what did they show you on the screen? The, the, my, my brain with a big giant dot just sitting right there. I know you remember. Every detail. But we, he had a week in between when we found out he had cancer to when he was going to have his port surgery mm -hmm. and then chemo. Mm -hmm. In that week span, he didn't know. We didn't know how to tell him. How do you tell an eight-year-old? Mm -hmm. And same thing, his, his great-grandfather was a, like his best friend and he had passed away from cancer. So I was scared to say that word and him think bad immediately. So we actually got all the team together. We had our social worker, like it was, they were phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And they sat him around, and, but they were very honest. Like he's known everything all through and he said like, Hayden, you have cancer, but we're going to beat this. Mm -hmm. And so. here I am today. And here you Good. are. May 5th. Yes. CN cycle for Chio. Yes. Where will you be? Uh, there. You there? <laughs> yeah. It took you're a second. There. You know, it's all good. Uh, and we were talking about whether you were going to bike or you were going to walk. I like what you're going to do. You're going to walk it. Uh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm with you, buddy. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, so, so talk to me a little bit about what it means for the community to come together on that day. And all the focus is on pediatric oncology and that the whole community is thinking about you and kids that have been diagnosed with cancer. Well, the main thing that I think is because, like, uh, for all of the people who walk, they're raising money for Chio and all, like, the medicine, the food, and all the stuff that they need to help the other people who are, like, fighting in what in their uh, illness that, that they have. So that, that I really like walking, and I stumped... What, what did I do, the 5K or the 2K? The 2K last year. Darn it. Mm -hmm. We'll do 5K this Yeah. Now. We'll do 5K. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's fantastic. That's great. So you see everybody come together. 
What's it been like for you, Mom? I mean, really, only three years ago. I mean, this isn't, oh. you know, this isn't a decade ago. This oh, is exactly. quite fresh. And every four months, he still goes for, we go for MRIs. Mm -hmm. Then we have to wait a period of seven to two weeks for the results. So between those MRI and the results, it's still anxiety-driven, hoping, obviously, it never comes back or any other, you know. So, and now we see endocrinology, which is all about, you know, his growth, because now with radiation and everything, it could have affected his, his growth, his height, his puberty, everything. Mm -hmm. So it's still, it's still ongoing. So even though he's, you know, you're in the clear, mm -hmm. but it's, we're still going through it mm -hmm. every one, four months. One thing that I always do to check is because during, like, the cancer and stuff like that, I couldn't look up with my eyes like like this, Ooh. and my my left side was it was really weak. And the thing that I do whenever I get a headache now or just like something, I go because yeah. his tumor was right right there, <clears throat> and I couldn't look up. And so he's always scared, and he'll look up to make sure mm -hmm. it's not back. So while you're looking up, what are you looking forward to? What do you want to do? What's your dream? Uh, um. Well, I, I was thinking on being like a teacher or something. I, I really don't know. I just I have, okay. I have a lot of things that I want to yeah. do. You're 11. <clears throat> it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a lot of kids know what they want to do at 11, yeah. and that's okay. But you would be a fantastic teacher. Mm. Yeah, I can already tell. Kindergarten. Talk. Kindergarten. I can't deal with grade five. <laughs> <laughs> you can't deal with kids your own age, but you can deal with the kindergartens. Oh, yeah. I like that. I like What's that. What's one and one? I like that. How did you keep your hope alive, Mom? through him it was his dancing through cancer mm -hmm. seeing how positive he was we he's also an online persona who helped kids mm -hmm. as little raven and i'm the mom the dark raven and he would do his dances we do dances together like he kept me going mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when you think about mom being there for you all that time have you ever really kind of just thought, you know, what, what a special mom you have? Did you, do you think about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. She is a wonderful mom, though, and I'm glad I got her. Oh, I love you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. It's very special. It's going to make me very special. <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about your kids at school and your friends. What did they think when they found out you had cancer? Well, the, the only thing that I can remember is my little brother, Connor. He was uh, coming to get, what was it, signed up for school or something mm -hmm. like that? He was coming to get signed up, and I came along, and I was still, like, exhausted and this and that, and it was recess. The principal came out to see what was happening, I think. Well, it's because he was visiting the school. Right. He wasn't in school for grade three. Right. So when we went in, it was the first time they've seen you. You had your bald head, you had his mm -hmm. brand new scars, and all the kids, what did they do? They all came around me <laughs> and like circled me and a lot of Aww. them were crying and this and that. But I haven't been there in two, almost two years. Well, it was the year, but obviously COVID, but yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but I mean, those are, those are moments, right, that you remember. You'll probably remember that for the rest of your life, right, that your brother was signing up and, and your school was, was very, very different. What would you say to other families and other kids that are going through this type of, of treatment and uh, kids that are maybe even participating in CN Cycle for Chio? Well, Chio, just, just come to Chio. Like, they have amazing doctors, amazing nurses. Like, the people there care a lot. And when you come in there, you're like a new family member to the Chio hospital. I love Chio. And if, if your child or parent is going through something so rough, Chio is the place that I say to go. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Oh, Chio's the place. It's the place. When you, and I, this is just me, so you can tell me if you're, if you're the same way. When I was, uh, before being a mom, I was like, oh, that's great, Chio's there, and I would drive by it and go, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It looked like bricks and mortar to me, and I knew there was talented people in there. When you become a mom, it's a very different feeling about Chio. Were you the same way? hundred Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. even just, even before everything, you know, just even going to emergency, like if, you know, a kid was sick. But going in there as an oncology family, which you never think you're going to be a part of, holy cow, they made you feel good. Mm -hmm. Like, it was rare that we actually cried. Like, I, I did a lot of my crying at home, but when we were at the hospital, it was just laughing, 
Mm -hmm. He did. He did. He did dance battles with nurses. <laughs> One of the things that I love that I still do to this I day, that. I have a doctor who is a uh, Doctor Johnson, and whenever she comes in, I call. I go like Doctor John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> and they hug it out. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I love that. That's fantastic. Okay. So it's so those those moments got you through the bigger moments. Caden, yes. is that is that a fair thing to say? Yep. And where did the love of dancing come from? I don't know. You've been dancing know. before you were walking. <laughs> Just a dancer. <laughs> Just a dancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, uh, what grade are you in now? A fifth. Yeah. How's school? Tiring. Tiring, yeah. Yeah. So you're not in school today, which is which is fun. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You're with me today. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, so CN Cycle, uh, obviously Chio coming up May 5th. Uh, what would you say to people that are maybe thinking about making a donation or volunteering? We need lots of volunteers. What would you say to them? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. it, like, it, it really helps for the people who help and donate to get all like, the medicine and all the things that the families and <clears throat> the families and all that and what they need to help their kid or parent. Yeah. And that's what a lot of the donation does. That's fantastic. And do you have friends and family that participate with you? Kelly? Now we do. Yeah. Last year was our first year, yeah. and now we're there for life. So yeah. we'll have a big group of people, and we're going to raise in Caden's name this year. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, Caden, I'm going to make a donation. Oh, okay? thank you. Would that, be, would that be good? Can I donate to your team? Okay, fantastic. So I'm going to make a donation He's and support, uh, support Caden and make sure that, uh, that you know, your team feels well supported. and Because uh, I want to be part of Team Caden. Because I think you've got a lot of people that love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you feel that? Oh, yeah. You feel the love. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, Mom. <laughs> what is, what's the biggest lesson? Have faith. Don't, don't give up. And I don't know, just, it's your support system, right? I wouldn't have got through this without obviously him, but without my partner, my other kids, my mom and dad, you know, extension grandparents, your Noni and Papa. Like, we were one big family getting through this, and he's just inspiring. One big family, and then you add the Chio family to that, Caden, oh. right? You feel like a member of the family. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Yes, I know you do. <laughs> it's fantastic. You're a superstar, and I'm so happy to have you here. And I know, like, a decade from now, I'm going to be like, you know who I had on my show? Yeah, the <laughs> Caden Dussault. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's so, amazing. I can tell. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. special to meet you. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Mom. Thank appreciate it very us. much. Caden and Kelly joining us today, talking all about CN Cycle for Chio. My good friend Emily Jamison is coming on up, so you don't want to go anywhere. Stay with us on an hour to give. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you, she's my friend and she's amazing. Emily Jamison is here from the Chio <laughs> Foundation. Hello. Thank How you are for, you? I'm okay. This has been a wonderful show so far. So far, I'm so excited yeah, to share too. everything about CN Cycle yeah. uh, for Chio, which is so important. You've it got really a very is. big job at the foundation. Tell me what you do. Well, uh, first of all, not only do I oversee our, all of our events, which includes CN mm -hmm. Cycle, I engage the community in what we do, which is so, so important. Yeah. Um, as you can tell from Caden and Kelly's mm -hmm. story, just the work that we do at CHEO for everybody is so yeah. important for the community. So, yeah. you know, yes, we're doing events, but it's so much more than that. Like the cause, you see the families, you see the impact that it has, you hear about our researchers. Mm -hmm. You know, the work that we do is so important. So I'm just, I'm so happy to be here to share with you a little bit about what we're doing with CN Cycle for CHEO. And, and you brought all this great stuff, so I'm I gonna did. show a few things. So what, so tell me why you brought in this to show me today. Well, okay, so we've heard about the cause. The cause is incredible, yeah. but the event itself is so much fun. It's, you know, it's all ages. It's it's inclusive. 
We have yeah, the two, yeah. the 5K, uh, 35K, uh, 35K, 70K. You know, everybody can participate at different levels. I brought these in to show you that, yeah. you know, there's some fun things about the event. It's a fundraising event wow. through and through. It is for oncology. And so the more you fundraise, the more fun swag you get. Oh, I love it. So this is our wonderful, and you saw this yeah. on Caden too, yeah. our CA and Cycle for Chio vest. If oh. you raise $500, you get this vest. It's high quality. I see them out in the community, so I know it's good quality. We source this ourselves. We yeah. have the shirt, the buff, you know, it's just, you know, it's it's just a fun event. And you get to obviously have these fun swag pieces, yeah. but also you're entered into lots of contests as well. Yeah. We have a trip for Disney for four. Wow. Yes. So wow. all sorts Fantastic. of different great things. Yeah. May 5th is the big day. May 5th is so the big day. Uh, you know, we talked a lot today about, about a village, the village that's around oncology families, yeah. the village that's around Chio. So we have the incredible researchers, which we talked to earlier. Mm -hmm. We have the incredible staff team, including social workers, oncology mm -hmm. social workers. We have the families, we have the patients, we have everybody, we've got the donors. We also need lots of volunteers. We need a ton of volunteers. We need community support through okay. and through. Right from our title sponsor who's CN to our 70 root sponsor, Erickson as well. You know, we need all the sponsors, but we need the community to come out first and foremost too. So last year we had 6,200 participants. That, wow. uh, that's incredible. Wow. We had 700 volunteers. But those volunteers are actually critical in us to enable the actual event itself. So right now, we're putting a call out, and I'm putting it here right now. Yeah. We need volunteers. It yeah. counts for all your hours if you're a student at high school yeah. as well. Yeah. You get six hours for it. So I would really love if you can go to cncycle.ca and sign up. Um, everybody's welcome to join, and you also get some free food. Oh, that's exciting. Okay. And like and for food. such a great cause. And and I always think the weatherman's very friendly to us on <laughs> CN Cycle Day. Uh, yes, fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. Oh I know gosh. it keeps you up at night, I'm it sure. Does, yes. um, but but it's going to be a great day. It doesn't matter if rain or shine. It's going to be a fantastic day. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, it's funding really critical uh, programs and, and research uh, helping families at CHEO. So talk to me a little bit about, about that piece. The funding piece. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is our largest oncology fundraiser. I mean, you've heard from a family directly, but there's 500 other patients that we serve on an annual basis. Over 100 kids are diagnosed on an annual basis as well that come through the doors of CHEO. Mm -hmm. So while this is an amazing and it's a fun event, you get out, you cycle, you go across the city, you know, it really is about the cause and where the funds go back to. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, we raised $1.8 million last year. We really want to surpass that this year. I have a $2 million goal in my head, so yeah. we're really hoping to achieve that. So, you know, you can come out as a team captain. Uh, we have lots of workplace teams that have signed mm -hmm. up, fundraise, uh, enjoy the day as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a great opportunity to cycle through our beautiful city. We yeah. close down a lot of the roads and parkways, so it, it's actually quite beautiful to participate. And you're also just supporting such an amazing cause. Like, you're now part of Team Chio, Sam. Yes. I just want to let you yes, know that, know. like, you really truly I are, know. and we yeah. need the community to be part of our, our our team CHEO because mm -hmm. it's their support that allows us to do the wonderful work that Dr. Jason Berman talked about. Um, you heard about Kelly and Caden's story mm -hmm. as well, uh, Parissa, the wonderful work she does. Mm -hmm. This event enables us to be able to have those services, wow. to have obviously that research in place. So, you know, you can become part of one team CHEO just by coming out to this event. It's amazing. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I, it's taken me a long time to, to even get my mind wrapped around the word children and cancer in the same yeah. sentence. Yeah. So this is a way, whenever I feel a bit helpless about something, yeah. I want action. Mm -hmm. So so this feels very action oriented Absolutely. for me. Uh, you know, yeah. a lot of people come, they're like, how can I help? How can I support? Mm -hmm. You know, we all have different ways and different means of how we can support. You know, it's mm -hmm. wonderful if you can give, write a thousand dollar check, that's great. Mm -hmm. But even just coming and volunteering and supporting mm -hmm. really does help the cause. So, you know, if you want to know how you can give back to your community, mm -hmm. come out on May 5th, mm -hmm. show up, be one of the, you know, we had 6,200. I'm going for 7,000, 8,000 participants wow. this year. You can join as a participant and or a volunteer. And are you going to be coming that day as well. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. <laughs> I, I, I have to move something, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna desperately try yeah. to get there. And I think too, Emily, that when you think about all the different ways people can participate, we obviously yeah. talked about being a donor. We talked about being a volunteer. Yeah. But within the event, yeah. walk through all the different options because sure. Kate and I. Kate and I prefer to walk. So it's all ages okay? and all abilities. So <laughs> yeah. I too will be doing either the two or the 5K as yeah. well. And you can push your stroller. You can even bring your dog with a leash, mm -hmm. right? So we, we want everybody to come out in the community. But if you're feeling a little bit more gusty and you've got some wind under your sails, you can participate in a 15K, 35K, or even a 70 kilometer race. So it is a very fun event because you get, you know, our friends and family, the nearest and dearest to Chio. And then you get these cycling enthusiasts out because you know what? We close down roads that are normally not closed down mm -hmm. and you can cycle 
cycle through. Now, I do have to say one thing, it's not a race. Right. Right, we want everybody to be right. safe and go right. within a certain reason, um, but I can tell you the 70K, uh, they do cycle a little bit faster than some of us. Yeah. So I'll be in that two to five K zone myself. Can I guarantee you something? Yes. They cycle faster than I do. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the guarantee I will give you today. Oh my God. Okay, so we've talked about all of this, and, and when I think about putting on an event, I know mm -hmm. how the, the sleepless nights, yes. I know the worry, I know all of that. At the end of the day, when it whether it's 1.5, 1.8, or $2 million, whatever the number at the end of the day, where does that sort of leave your heart? Because I know how hard you work. It leaves it in such a beautiful place because we know we gave back to families like Aiden, right? Like at the end of the day, that's really truly where it is. And we see them come out. So we have a lot of friends and family, patients of Chio that come out uh, and they rally. Their community shows up. They come with different shirts to show their support for whomever, right? And um, it's such a beautiful thing to see because, you know, these kids have gone through more challenges than you could even imagine as an adult. And there they are with their friends and their family kind of championing that. And it's a beautiful thing to see, you know, this event for many families, it's about their child, it's about their neighbor, it's about a, a relative. It's also a legacy event for some families too, where they go out and they show the honor. Um, you know, unfortunately, some kids have passed obviously from cancer, so they do come out to this event to show their honor towards their loved one. Wow. And I know we talked about being a mom earlier. I mean, I know you're a mom, I'm a mom. Two boys. Oh my heavens, <laughs> what does that do to this role? I mean, it's a relatively new role. You've been in it for a couple of years now, but. But, you know, being part of the Chio family and, and knowing that you've got those little guys at home. Yeah, well, you know, I have gone through Chio for different reasons, not oncology. Um, and it really, truly is a special place where you feel so supported. Um, as a mom, I have a two-year-old and a six-year-old. And every time I see another child, I, you know, for me, it's that could be my kid. And I only want the best for them. So I'm in this job, and, and I can tell you, everybody at the foundation's there because we want the best future for all the kids in our community. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good way to wake up every morning and understand, okay, why I do this. I wake up so that I can help service these kids and these families. Yeah, absolutely. Now we have CN Cycle, obviously, which yes. is our focus today, yeah. but always lots coming up within CHEO. So if this date doesn't work for a family to participate, they've got lots of, of, of other items and, and different ways to, to get inv involved with CHEO. Well, I wasn't going to announce it here today, and so, but I will tell you, we are actually bringing back the teddy bears picnic <gasps> at June 16th at the Aviation Museum. So there's a way to participate there. We also have a 50-50 going on now. We're almost close to a million dollars. So, you know, there's many different ways to yeah. get involved with CHEO, there's volunteer opportunities, as I've mentioned before. Uh, just even becoming a monthly donor is so important to us, whether it's five, ten, twenty dollars, whatever people can give, mm -hmm. you know, that is important uh, for obviously people just like Caden and the family, uh, mm -hmm. the research that we support, just getting involved uh, and becoming part of the CHEO family. Mm -hmm. And when you're in it, you really do feel a part of it. For sure. And I committed to Caden, I'm going to make a gift towards his, his of course, uh, his adventure, his CN yeah. Cycle um, donation page. But uh, for those that may want to donate, they may be able to find their own friend, but yeah. if they don't, they could give to Caden, right? They can give to Caden, right. absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can find the family and friends. Just go mm -hmm. to cncycle.ca. You'll find all the different uh, friends and family, and mm -hmm. uh, you can give to anybody's page, mm -hmm. actually, yeah. uh, and just you know further that support. Uh, you can also just donate as a regular donor as well, but absolutely you can support Caden and all the wonderful other friends and families and workplace teams that have registered as well. And we know CN obviously is your big sponsor, uh, but you can't do this without sponsors. Oh my gosh. Emily, talk to me a little bit about the sponsor so side. each of our routes has a sponsor to it. So, you know, CN is our title sponsor. We have Ericsson coming in at our 70K, National Bank at our 35K. Um, we also have Feely Group at our 15K and Coughlin at our 2 and 10K. So these are Wonderful sponsors, you know, a lot of these comes back year over year because they see such value in supporting uh, CHEO within the community as well. Uh, we also have McDonald's as a sponsor. Mm. So we obviously have the uh, Dream Team, which you've already heard from Caden, so he was part of the Dream Team last year. But McDonald's comes on and supports these kids. They're kind of like our spokespeople oh, for the that. event. Yeah, you know, it's it's one thing for me to talk about it, but for Caden to talk about his journey is so much more valuable at times. I'm, I'm <laughs> saying it here. And, uh, you know, to have that sponsor as well. We even have some friends and family that have sponsored areas as well. So Grist Gang is sponsoring our Kid Fun Zone this year. Uh, this is a, a legacy gift 
um, and even like MNP is one of our sponsors as well. So it's just wonderful to see the community mm -hmm. and the corporate community come out and support us as well to make yeah. sure that this event keeps growing, right? Yeah. So one thing I haven't mentioned too yeah. is I have not found a larger cycling event outside of this one yet. So I'm, fingers crossed, we're doing some investigation. Yeah. It could even be one of the largest cycling wow. events in Canada. That's incredible. Yeah. And the great swag. We were showing the swag I know, earlier. I know. Um, so great <laughs> swag, great event. Here, I'm going to show this again. A great logo. Yeah. And, and you were mentioning as well, uh, Emily, that you see these in the community. I do. I see them in the community. Especially the cycling ones, too. Yes. Like this one particularly, I see the year over year. And you know, you just have to raise just a little bit of money to get this one. This is 175, and yeah. then you know it's repurposed and you can wear it. So yeah. a lot of our cycling enthusiasts love that one. Yeah. So absolutely, but I think for the kids, it's that trip to Disney that people are yeah. very excited to be entered yeah. uh, in the draw for. Very excited. So we're gonna go to cncycle.ca. What are we gonna find there? Uh, opportunities to register. Mm -hmm. uh, you can register as a team captain, a workplace team as well. So you know everybody's asking me lately, how can I, how can I volunteer with Chio? How can I give mm -hmm. back as a workplace? I'm like, well, you know what? You can participate. Rogers could sign up with their own team and right. and then fundraise uh, on behalf of. It's a great way for workplace engagement as well. Um, if you want to go look at the um, different routes, you can go there as well. Uh, you can look at different pages, understand the stories, the inspiration, and then give donations to some of the people that have teams as well. So you just get all the information about the event there, and, and I highly encourage you register or, or come and volunteer. Yes. So so last call it for volunteers. Yes. If anyone, I, I mean, I've got a daughter in high school, so yes. I'm going to go home and say, <laughs> yeah, you know, ga gather your, your friends together. Because oh, be it's always fun to have them do yes. it together as well. Absolutely. So last call it for volunteers. How will they get in touch with you? Oh, they can go to cncycle.ca, uh, and they can absolutely register to volunteer there. So there is a sign-up page that's all integrated into our website um, whether you're um, even like in a workplace uh, can go and volunteer instead of participating in the event themselves so they can go and register there as well school groups can go and register there as well okay. um, and I mean I'm willing to give my card out to anybody that's willing to yes. register because yeah, we just need a couple more uh, I think about a hundred more and then okay. we're good to go but okay. uh, definitely need the community support there I think we did it today I think, I think we, we did, did it, it. I yeah. think we'll share with everyone For that sure. we need volunteers Emily thank you so much no, thanks, always Sam. a pleasure to spend yeah, time with you. you as well Emily Jamison joining us today to all of my incredible guests and a special shout out to my friend and my new friend, Caden, uh, please support him and all of those amazing kids at CHEO through the oncology department. It's been an hour to give and it's one I won't soon forget.